This is KCTV English News. I'm Nick Brontis. The City Planning Committee has passed the development plan for the Eho Recreation Area. The committee granted conditional approval January 11th for the revised plan that was submitted by the project operator. The committee wants the developer to build more roads to the nearby community, give a parking lot to the local government, and recalculate the development's estimated volume of water usage and sewage production. The plan for the Eho Recreation Area includes the construction of accommodations with 2,000 guest rooms and what's being billed as an integrated marina on a 230,000 square meter site near Eho Beach. The project still needs to pass an environmental impact assessment. The Provincial Council also must approve the plan. Authorities have ended the first period in five years in which people were allowed to file claims that they are, or a family member was, a victim of the April 3rd incident. The provincial government says 21,284 people filed claims over the past year. 340 are seeking official recognition as a victim. The remaining 20,944 say their relative was a victim. The province will convene the first meeting in 2019 of the April 3rd Incident Working Committee on January 28th. Members will then begin reviewing the claims. Fish consignment sales from boats that work the waters around Jeju City exceeded 200 billion won last year. Officials say 30,454 tons of fish were sold on consignment through the three Suhyup branches in the city. That's a 26% increase over 2017. Gross sales were up 9% to 235.3 billion won. The amount of yellow corvina sold on consignment increased 28% by volume and 19% by value. The volume of hair tail sold was up 13%, but gross sales were up only 1%. Finally, both the amount and the monetary value of tile fish sold on consignment last year fell. Jeju City is surveying local farms through January 25th to gauge the demand for foreign workers during this year's busy season. Farmers often struggle to hire enough help when they need it most. The city is surveying farms that have expressed interest in hiring foreign seasonal workers as well as foreign nationals who married local residents and who would like to participate in this project. One farm can hire up to four seasonal workers for 90 days. Jeju City officials will select the farms and seasonal workers by the end of March. The Jeju World Natural Heritage Center is recruiting World Natural Heritage Jeju supporters. Anyone, non-Koreans included, who runs a blog or social media account is welcome to apply. The center is looking for 30 people. Everyone selected as supporters will use their online platforms to promote Jeju, which is the recipient of three UNESCO designations. The work begins next month and runs through the end of the year. In order to facilitate their work, the supporters will be given free entrance to the tourist attractions run by the province, as well as a small payment for their efforts. The government plans to build about 1,600 relatively small subsidized rental apartment units this year in Jeju. Mike Belfour has more in this report. This is the community center in Ildo-dong, Jeju City. The building is more than 30 years old. It will be torn down and a new building will replace it. The construction for the building was approved by the Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport at the end of last year. The building will have two underground levels and 10 floors. It will be occupied by 120 happy housing units and governmental offices. Happy housing ranges from 21 to 39 square meters in size. These units are being specifically targeted at younger people who are new to the workforce, newlyweds, university students, and lower income individuals. The province also has other supply plans finalized. 
80 happy housing units will be created in Jungangdong, Sogipo City. More happy housing units will be provided in Gniptong, Jeju City. They will be located at the parking lot of the Kim Mandok Memorial Museum. The construction for the 140 units is planned to begin before the end of this year. The construction plan for 684 happy housing units across the island include Gniptong, Halim, and Sohongdong has been finalized. Construction for 1,630 rental units, including 391 10-year-long rental units at the Cheju Science Park and 346 units in Songsangup, will begin or be completed within this year. The province is now reviewing plans to find lots to provide new apartments to replace the cancelled 700-unit provision project in Donamdong. <laughs> As plans to provide rental apartment units are finalized, the provincial government is gathering speed to supply housing on the island. Mike Balfour, KCTV. Halim Park is displaying over 500,000 flowers this month in its annual Narcissus Festival. will pick up later Tuesday, while skies will remain overcast or mostly cloudy. Here's your forecast. The low in Jeju City will be 6 and the afternoon high 10 degrees. In Sogipo, temperatures will fall between 6 and 12. In Zhongshan, the low before lunch will be 4 and the high later on, 10 degrees. Temperatures across the island in Gosan will range from 6 to 9. And the morning low up on the mountain at Songpanak will be one degree below zero and the afternoon high four above. Out on the water, winds will be out of the northwest and north at seven to 14 meters per second and seas will be between one and three meters. And here's a look at the extended forecast. And that brings us to the end of today's newscast. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you'll tune in next time. Until then, don't forget to find us on YouTube by searching for KCTV E-News Jeju. 시청자 여러분, 감사합니다.